When dummies speak, everybody listens. Trina O'Dell's dad used to have a ventriloquist act. That's why he has all those dummies in the attic. Oh, I can make a terrible, terrible joke. Do it. <laughs> no. Do it. No. He calls it his <laughs> dummy museum. There's a dummy with freckles, one w uh, and one with a sneer just like Rocky. Trina and her brother Dan think the dummies are pretty cool. But now there are voices in the attic and the dummies keep showing up in the strangest places. No way those dummies could be alive, right? This podcast is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Spoiler warning for whatever is in the title of this episode. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher, and Goodreads. Become part of the disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that the Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, and all other major podcast apps. Welcome to episode 144 of the Horror of Babylon, where we discuss Night of the Living Dummy 3. I am Ryan. With me, as always, is Daniel. Say hi, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Uh, and we want to say a special thank you to our patrons. Thank you to Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and... Logan. The, the Full Metal, metal patron, patron. And Ben, ben the Fourth, patron, patron of Hope. hope. And Mia the Fifth, the Rainmaker. She makes it rain, yeah. Oh, she makes it rain. And thank you to Four Horsemen Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall, Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mall Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can shop online at fourhorsemen.tcgplayerpro.com, where you can also now manage your comic subscriptions. And if you make it into the store, say hello to Ronald the Third, Grampus of Christmas, and ask him what dummy is his favorite dummy. And you'll... Why is it Ryan and Daniel? <laughs> I, he, I was gonna say he'll probably make some political joke. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I I did figure out how to use the uh, the website, and it's actually it's not so bad. Yeah, it's handy. I like um, it. Uh, Ryan picks up my comics for me. I might have to give him money ahead of time this time because I ordered a bunch of covers of a new Superman series. Ooh, it's gonna be like dynamite. Twenty thirty bucks whenever they drop. You just pay me after. Hiya! Happy Easter! Okay, trigger warning, dummies, or if you're triggered by Night of the Living Dummy books. Yeah, that, <laughs> then uh, if you, if you're really afraid of cousins, <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say bullying. I don't think the bullying in this is portrayed as well as like the haunted mask. Yeah, I mean, it, it's more like cousin bullying. And I know that that's still not okay, and we shouldn't play it down. But it does, it does, but it does come in tears. Yeah. Yeah, and I, this felt more like cousins who like each other but don't spend enough time together. To this be... feels like, it felt like pranks. Yeah. As opposed to, we want to make this girl cry because it's the only way we can get off. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's not like the haunted mask. Yeah. Uh, okay, so our history with Night of the Living Dummy 3. I'm I'm positive I read this one as a kid. And I, I remembered some of the things that happened as I was going through this. Not a lot because it was, I would have been like less than 10 when I read this book. Yeah. But I, I did, there were a, a couple key things that I did remember. And I remember this one being one of my favorites as a kid. I think mainly because of the cover and because of the fact that there were a bunch of dummies. And I also think this was my, the first, one of the first ones I read. Um, I don't think I've ever seen the TV show adaptation of this. I have only seen the TV show adaptation and the cover for this. Mm -hmm. So this is my first time reading. Cool. That's my history. All right, jumping to covers. Um, we only have two. 
Wow. We have the uh, Amer- the original one by Tim Jacobus, which I think is one of one of the the most tech. Guy. At least it is for me personally. It's horrifying. Look at that. Yeah. If uh, I walked up into an attic and saw that, I'd shit my pants. <laughs> shit my pants. <laughs> it's a dummy museum. <laughs> uh, a museum has cases. Yeah. <laughs> they should be behind glass. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think I think it's uh, spectacular, and I love like the sh- the like puke pea soup shade of green. Yeah, it's, just... a, it's a good shade of green for this. Yeah, it matches. It, really it's well. very monster slime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the American reprint, which I I like this one a little more than some of the other ones. Yeah, um, it's all right. I like the I I like the different details on the other dummies in the background. <sighs> It could have been a lot worse. Yeah, I, I think the we're being kind of hard on the artist who does these American reprint covers. Yeah, a lot, so some of that has to be nostalgia, but it, part of it is like if if we were st- you know analyzing these in a vacuum, not comparing them to the original Tim Jacobus covers, I think we'd be a lot more positive. Um, so, sorry artist but yeah just, th- this it, one's fine it just is what it is. Th- this one's a lot better than some of the other ones that yeah we've been comparing I, I like it a lot more than the first two night of the living dummy covers i'm kind of disappointed we don't got any of them like really freaky korean ones yeah. we usually get i went through all of them and they just they just reused this art and at you know, some point they were like why aren't we just using the same art yeah <laughs> yeah the vampires are pure myth superstition i may be able to bring you proof that the superstition of yesterday can become the scientific reality of today. The background, this book was written by R.L. Stein and published in February of 1996. This is the third of three Night of the Living Dummy books from the original Goosebumps series. It's number 40 of 62 from the original Goosebumps series, and this is the third book in the Slappy Saga out of 18. The fourth one comes about in Goosebumps Series 2000. It's Goosebumps Series 2000 number two, Bride of the Living Dummy, which I think I read that one as a kid. I definitely saw the TV show because I remember when that episode of the TV show was coming out. And it might have been like the second Goosebumps series. I don't don't remember, but it was like or it may have been like a standalone like TV Mm -hmm. special. But they promoted that one like huge. Yeah, no, I, I remember that one. Uh, this uh, Night of the Living Dummy 3 has two adaptations. It was episodes 24 and 25 of season 2 of the original Goosebumps TV series. And it came to audiobook for the first time last year in 2023, read by Rachel Jacobs. If you are like into like Audible, you should definitely check, check out the Goosebumps selection because they started... Last year in 2023, they started re-releasing and re-recording Goosebumps audiobooks and giving audiobooks for some of them that have never had audiobooks, and uh, they're like they run to like like eight to ten dollars. But I've seen I've seen them have sales where they can be like two or three bucks a piece. Yeah, which is a uh, a good time to like load up on a bunch of them. So definitely check. And they're pretty they're pretty high quality audiobooks generally speaking. Yeah. I, I've been enjoying the audiobooks of them. Yeah, I have. I've done most of them in audio, but I a, a handful of them I haven't. Like I've been reading some of these to Drake. Um, these are these are good. Uh, as long as your kid likes s- semi spooky stuff, these are these are good bedtime or read to your kids books. I'd really promote that. Yeah, we've. I think Drake and I have read like five, maybe six this this past summer. We we've read a bunch of them. He loves. If I them. didn't stutter so much, uh, whenever I uh, try to read aloud, I would read to my children. And if my children knew I was the dad. Well, if you read, the more you read aloud, it might help with with the stutter. I guess that's true. And that's that. Another story in the classic infallible three act structure. Good enough for Aristotle. Good enough for the Simpsons. Mr. Sislak, I have a feeling there's going to be one more act to this story. Well, I'm not hanging around for that. Four acts. Okay, so structure and themes. Is this book too similar to the first two? Yes. (laughs) or, Or is it just he's using established tropes and an established plot archetype and it works for kids and it's just weird because we're adults? 
a little column A, a little column B. I, I think it's because I love slasher movies, and at the end of the day, they're all the same movie. Mm -hmm. I think the only real difference there is, is like I get some creative kills. And that's kind of what you remember when you're watching that kind of nonsense. Mm -hmm. But when you have this, it's the kids don't know the dummy's alive for the first 80 pages. Mm -hmm. The dummy's alive. Someone behind me, isn't there? Yeah, it's just it's him. Um, I guess the equivalent is pranks, and yeah. you, there's only so far you can go with these kinds of pranks in a kid. Like in every like a room gets trashed in every one of these books. Yeah, I do. I did put some research into this and the only like the only one past this one that I've had any experience with is Bride of the Living Dummy. But I did look at the like the titles and the covers and I looked at some of the synopsis of some of the f n s other slappy books and it definitely seems like they're different. Um like one thing that happens a lot is it looks like he has crossovers with other Goosebumps villains. There's one where he meets the mummy from the Curse of the Mummy books. There's one where he meets the Invisible Boy. Um, I think there's a uh, there's a Horror Land slappy book and there's a Monster Blood slappy book. Yeah. So at some point, he must have decided, all right, we need to do something different with yeah. these, because because kids like this character. And it's like, I'm not trying to be harsh on it. Because I also like, like, the Child's Play movies. But they're all the same movie, really. Mm -hmm. I guess the first Child's Play movie really plays up like no one knows the doll is alive. But, but in Child's Play 2, it's like, well, we the audience knows. So we don't, like, mm -hmm. fiddle with that. But the characters still don't. Yeah. But I, I think it's probably just, A, reading these books so close together, uh, being a little bit older... And it is just a little bit of the same kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely... I was definitely having deja vu the entire time I was reading this book. Yeah. Um, but... I still had fun with it. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. It's just, like, if, if you enjoy the book... I, it, they're, it's not the same book, but it's the same kind of story. Yeah. So if that's what you're enjoying, you know, read it. Cool. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Jumping into characters, let's talk about Trina and Dan. It was a little unusual to have a uh, pair of siblings as the protagonists who weren't constantly fighting and arguing, because that's been like, like sibling, sibling rivalry and sibling arguing has been like a constant theme in all these books. Yeah. I, they got I, they had a couple arguments but for the most part that wasn't really a thing and instead it was cousin bickering yeah um and talking about zane Z i thought zane was so hilarious like i when he was taking pictures of the molding and talking about how cool the molding was i i was laughing out loud i uh trina's like how big a nerd do you have to be to think that taking a picture of a molding is cool It kind of reminds me of maybe something I would do if I, if I, like, when I had a camera and I was doing, like, just kind of weird off-the-wall shit with the, the, I guess, not toys, but the toys that I had at the time. Mm. I, I had a VHS, like, recording camera. I'd go around, I'd record everything. Yeah, and I love the fact that they're like, oh, you have this camera, let's go outside and take pictures. No, I want to stay inside. I want to take pictures of the banister. Yeah, I, I was just <laughs> like that. I was like, I didn't like to go outside. Yeah. The only time I went outside was... I guess I used to walk everywhere. I was forced to go outside a lot. Yeah. Um, but, 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 but... These days, I love going outside. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm all about it. Uh, I thought it was a good twist. Um, the, like, the midpoint twist that all of... Like, for the first, like, two-thirds of the book, everything that had happened with the... I think there's a version of this book where the full end of the the twist at the end isn't that the dummies are alive and the actual twist is that Zane was fucking with them the whole time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that would never happen in a Goosebumps book because there has to be something supernatural. I th I also said the same thing with uh, Night of the Living Dummy 1. Mm -hmm. Was I thought it was just way better if it would have just been 
the sister's just mad. You keep trying to take her spotlight, like her thing. She's mm -hmm. a twin trying to find her own identity. And in this one, it's, hey, uh, you remember all those times you fucked with me? It it was kind of a good meta twist because as, as the reader, you're expecting Slappy to be doing all this crap. Yeah. And the it, but it it gives you all the pieces to figure it out on its own because it, it the Trina and Dan establish why Zane would have a motivation to do this, and it gives you little pieces of evidence. And that by the time like you realize like oh yeah duh I, of course it's him why why didn't I think of that yeah but um I mean it, it's still like a good like midpoint twist and then the dummies take over from there. Uh, which is which is just like what happens in the first book yeah the second book differs a little bit because slappy starts like way earlier in the book with his nonsense i was a uh, a little disappointed we didn't get more of more of the like you ha you set up like an entire dummy museum that is my main complaint with the book is that i wish it would have utilized the other dummies and characterize them a little more because because that felt like at least you're looking at the cover right mm -hmm. and you go this is how this one's going to differentiate itself it's like there's a bunch of them now yeah and then but you don't really end up getting that my so and that was my complaint the entire time i'm reading it i was like oh i wish he'd be using these other dummies making them into their own characters or the twist is like the all the dummies were in on it at the end yeah however to push back against myself, I do like how the book ended with them reading the words again and bringing the other dummies to life and them like mobbing Slappy. Yeah. Which I guess wouldn't work if we had it the way I wanted it, but I don't know. I feel like there's a way to have both. Yeah. And I also I also like the end in that I, I think this one has one of the better twist endings with Trina sending Slappy home with Zane. Yeah. Yeah, that was That's pretty That's some fun. spiteful shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, cuz. <laughs> Maybe they don't like each other all that much. Well, I... Okay, like, I get it. Like, they got blamed for everything. They're mm -hmm. pissed. Their entire summer's basically ruined. Yeah. But at the same time, you literally just had to deal with this. Like, you know this thing is, like, actually evil. Yeah, <laughs> you send it home with your cousin. <laughs> it's not like a fun prank or like, oh, I'm going to get back at you. Yeah, I put a grasshopper in your lunchbox. Yeah, this is a... Uh, I kind of hope this thing kills you. <laughs> um, I do like that it never, like... That Trina and Dan never get, like their name cleared and like oh you can go to summer camp it's just like i do i, I do kind of like that i kind of like that at the end of the story because at the end of a bunch of these stories the parents find out the dummy was real mm -hmm. or something like that and this one though it's a these two siblings have it's not a secret they want people to know but they have this thing that no one will ever believe them on yep and their summer's ruined it's kind of yep. great yeah i like it uh, and then let's wrap up characters uh, by talking about the parents. Um, so it's weird that like Arl Stein sneaks in these like really subtle like adult things that kids would never like pick up on. But me as an adult, I'm just like, ugh. like uh, he mentions that the uncle makes so much more money than their dad. But every time he comes over, he's always trying to like fish hook free stuff out of his brother that's how he has so much more money <laughs> yeah he keeps getting free crap Ta brian take it from a professional moocher mm -hmm. i come here i come to your house to get my monster energy tricks <laughs> yeah well i think there's like two left yeah i know and it's not gonna restock <laughs> i'll just have to buy them and put them in your fridge that's fine <laughs> um and i did like sympathize with the dad a little bit because like what the hell is he supposed to think yeah. is happening yeah um, uh, I kind of actually, I think I like the parents the most in this book out of, n not a, the most out of all the characters in this book, but out of all the parents from these dummy, dummy books. books. Yeah. Because this was kind of relatable. Like you have this dad who had this like dream. He what, you know, again, a aspiring writer. Mm -hmm. So, but sometimes you have to put that kind of stuff away to pay bills. Mm-hmm. And like he was a ventriloquist, he has this huge dummy collection. Mm -hmm. But like, who goes to ventriloquist shows even like in the nineties? Like, it's no it's way. a very niche market. Plus, apparently, his jokes were not very good. Yeah, 
And so he opens up a camera shop, but he still has that passion there. That's relatable. That's some relatable. That's yeah. some relatable shit. I like that. Yeah. Same. I'll kill you all. <laughs> I'll drive you crazy, and I'll kill you all on every nightmare you ever had. I am your worst dream come true. I'm everything you ever were afraid of. Scary shit. Did this book give you goosebumps? Oh, not really. Uh, one part did. Yeah. Um, three unescorted miners uh, playing around a well in the dark. Like You know what? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Why has the dad not boarded that shit up? Why is he not taking that well down? What the hell? It's just a well in the backyard. It's fine. The kids like to play around it. Sonic down there. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, Sonic goes down there. Uh, I, I want R.L. Stein to do like his take on a J horror story. I just want to see what that's like. Let's just Google R.L. Stein J horror because he has so many books. Like I want him to do like a little spooky ghost girl. <laughs> mm, Japanese edition of Goosebumps. All right, I'll look that up off. Hold on, let's look at these Japanese Goosebumps books. Whoa! I told you, like these Asian covers, they go hard. Okay, I'm gonna have to save this image and put it in the put it in the show I, I guess this is like okay so the first one's welcome to dead house say cheese and die uh it came from b beneath the sink maybe this one's in the night of the living dummy one we we went yeah. over that one in the show uh, i don't know what all of these are is that one uh let's get invisible because it's yeah. the mirror let's get invisible okay Ghost. We're pretty we're pretty good at this. Actually it has the titles right here. Ghost oh. King. <laughs> oh no. We're gonna look so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Headless Ghost, Ghost Camp, The Girl Next Door, The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. That one's kinda hard to read. Yeah. I don't know. Is it stay out of the basement because of the plants? That's what I was thinking. Okay. I mean yeah, but those they, they go hard. Yeah, they're really cool. That is R L Stein, not... if you ever listen to us, uh like you can do a crossover or a collaboration with a Japanese or Korean or whatever artist, but I want your take on the ring, the grudge. That'd be cool. I want his version of that. Yeah. That w I would read that. Um, are you doing the second ring book for, as one of your four books? Hundred percent. For... Okay, good. I think it's the best one. Good. I was. I was. I even I even had it on my short list. Yeah. But I was like, mm, no, Dan, there's a good chance Daniel will pick it. Yeah. Uh, th there's a few things uh, that are on my short list. And so, uh, some of them are like, here are things that I really wanted to cover. Here are things that I think Ryan and I will both really like. And I'm seeing what's like cross sectioning. And I I honestly think that it's the best one. I think I'm in the minority of that opinion. Oh. But a lot of people like the first and second, but. If we keep going, then I'll have us do the third one, and then you can see where it goes off the rails. Okay. Oh my god, are you Stephen King? No, I'm Dean Koontz. Oh. King and Koontz, what is your king for Night of the Living Dummy 3? I think just because of how much I talked about how I relate to the dad, I'm just going to go with that... Sad dead dream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just the adults in general, I feel like there's some like real relatability here. Like the the brother that does well and comes over, but then like still kind of needs stuff from you. And you're kind of like... He even like has extra helpings of food and like, oh, I'm going to eat some more of these potatoes and make a pig of myself. You know, and it's... Are, are those things really that big of a deal? No, but like when you're struggling and then you... Mm -hmm. And then you see someone that's a little well off come to your place and like do do something like that or ask you for something and you're like it might be one thing if it, like he invited them over and he was like you know reciprocating but yeah that just doesn't at least according to this book that doesn't seem to be the case yeah and it, it may be that since it's mostly from the point of view of the kids and, maybe they don't think to say that and god even the uh one of the friends that came over i think his name was frog mm-hmm like when he tried to make a stupid joke after the kid's camera got destroyed because that's just something that some adults do to try to relieve tension yep and you know i re i really kind of related to the adults here yeah same <laughs> no i thought the adults were, were pretty good in this one um i just have to go with zane and his stupid 
nerdiness. And, also really great. Yeah, yeah. I, I was driving during the molding part, and I was, like, laughing hard. And I was like, I got to get under control. This is too much. I honestly, God, it just kind of reminds me, maybe, not, like, exactly something you and I would do, but something along those lines where we would, like, just do something a little weird and slightly quirky. Yeah. And then for Koontz, I think it's just underutilizing the other dummies. Yeah, I just... I just wish I would have gotten a little bit more of that because the cover goes so hard and yeah. Uh, and then rankings. Let's see your first, but let me copy and paste mine here. Now here's your list again. If you want to check out our lists, uh, open up the show notes or the description on YouTube and get the link to our Google Drive, and you can check out how we rank these books and movies and everything we consume. Hmm. So it's here, go, it's gonna go in that se the sequel range of the other goosebumps. Um, it's a little tough. I think I'm gonna put it right above Night of the Living Dummy Two. So it's your new number thirty eight, above number two, and below the Haunted Mask Two. I think I put it in the exact same spot. Uh, it is my new number thirty six. Yeah. Above the second Night of the Living Dummy and below the Haunted Mask 2. It's not as good as the Haunted Mask 2 just because the Haunted Mask 2 has that continuity and that, like... That really kind of tickles us. And the, the like, cycling of themes, like, back... Like, not just doing the same themes again, but, like... Because it, do, it does the same thing, but it kind of twists it a little bit. Yeah, and... J it, just enough. It also kind of, like, it circles. Yeah. Um, and it also sets up a possible trilogy that we probably didn't get. Yeah. So. Hello, Mr. Stein. Hello, Mr. Black. Uh, who's that? He's the new drama teacher. Okay, for Zombie Day, I did find a couple things on the wiki. Uh, da, da, da. So, Night of the Living Dummy 2 and Night of the Living Dummy 3 were released nine months apart, and that is the shortest time between sequels from the original series uh, books. Any other sequels huh. from the original were longer than that. Okay. Uh, for a limited time... In 1996, K KFCs in Canada offered this book for $2.29 with the purchase of the meal. And copies of that version had a uh, YTV logo on the cover, which I think YTV is a, a station, mm -hmm. like a TV station in Canada. Um, heck, that would be kind of cool to own a Night of the Living Dummy 3 from a Canadian KFC from 1996. I might buy you one. Okay. <laughs> I, I, how long have we been recording? Uh, 25 minutes. Okay, we'll wrap this up. I'll Google it. Uh, and then there was an alternate um, concept art for an alternate cover art that they didn't use that showed uh, Slappy in the kitchen making a mess and uh, is a reference to a similar scene from the first book. Um, but I think they went with the right one. I do too, but maybe like it would have been better to not like build the expectation of the other dummies. Yeah. But I. But from a marketing standpoint. Yeah, it's the better cover. <laughs> yeah. Okay, homework. Uh, what is your pitch for your own Night of the Living Dummy book? It don't. It has to involve Slappy. Other than that, you can do whatever you want. Okay. Uh. So, a sl a Slappy is shipped overseas to Japan, mm -hmm. and he finds a tape, and he puts it into, <laughs> into and then Sadako says, seven days. Uh, Slappy versus Sadako, tw 2025. Isn't that the plot of Slappy's Nightmare? Um, maybe? No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> what is the plot of Slappy's Nightmare? Uh, no, no. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but okay. that, I, 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 that's how much I want more ring content. Um, I want an origin story for Slappy uh, that's basically like a, uh, a grip, like a, what do you call it when it's like a, a twisted fairy tale? Like a, dark fantasy? Yeah, but like, like a dark fantasy version of Pinocchio that's like a... Oh a, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Origin story. I know, and I know they've done An multiple. Story. I think they've done multiple because they. But it's, you could do more. Yeah. Multi goosebumps multiverse. Why not? Sla slappy into the the slappy verse. Yeah, the slappy verse. <laughs> yeah. Um, R. L. Stein, send us our check. 
<laughs> for further reading, so just a quick like this is our last summer of Goosebumps episode, so just a a kind of quick critique and I I like that we did all the sequels, but I'm also kind of disappointed that we did some of these sequels and didn't explore some of the other books. Drake and I just read uh, Welcome to Camp Nightmare, which is over there. Yeah. I remember that one being one of the better ones. Yeah. Um, one second. Okay, so we just read Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, and this is a classic. The, the book is kind of fire. Yeah. Um, so it's basically like an R.L. Stein Death Games where like the all the kids go to this camp and then they just get picked off one of a time one at a time and it's mm -hmm. like this sur like survival horror thing one of the first so the kids go into the the kids go into their cabin the first day and one kid like takes the covers off his bed and there's two snakes in his bed and one of them bites him and he's like, he's bleeding and his hand is swollen. And he goes to the counselor. He's like, the snake bit me and my hand's all swollen up. And the counselor's like, well, that sucks. You might want to put a bandage on that. And they're like, we should go to the nurse. There is no nurse here at Camp Nightmare. And it's just like all these like crazy ass backward things happen. I, uh, I, I am also glad that we did the sequels, but I am also kind of sad that we didn't get to do more diverse stuff. Yeah. at the same time um i think the one good thing is is again we're pulling ourselves back in our in our next season mm -hmm. to give us some more time but if we ever feel like throwing some more stuff out there doing a goosebumps book takes like no time yeah i mean you can just be like hey you want to next week you want to read welcome to camp nightmare and then get together and do a quick episode on yeah. it yeah and we and then that's how we do bonus episodes now is we just hey you feel like doing something yeah. So, so just uh, some other cool Goosebumps books that uh, I read with Drake this summer were uh, Welcome to Camp Nightmare, uh, Chakra on Shock Street, and Say Cheese and Die. All three of those were pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Say Cheese and Die is also really good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, upcoming on the Horror of Babylon, next Sunday is our next Dark Tower book. Hef will be back. Uh, we are doing Song of Susanna. I have three hours left on that audiobook. I, I'm not quite halfway through it, but I'm really liking it so far. I think I'm thinking it's it's one of the better ones, but I'm not I'm not very far into it. Um, we'll just wait to get your yeah, thoughts. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm 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 purposely being quiet. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then because I, I know something's going to happen with Susanna, I don't know what yet. So I'm just. We'll You're just see. hoping she doesn't get Fran. Yeah. Because that, <laughs> I know that that's a thing. If that's what happens, then it'll be the, instantly the worst book. But Okay, and then the next Sunday, October 20th, we're reading The Ceremonies by T.E.D. Klein. And then on October 27th, we are de-stressing from the stupid election with FDR American Badass. And our anniversary show will come out on Halloween, as it always does. Did you have some comments no, no. Okay. No, yeah, I, I don't got... Uh, I ain't got nothing of substance to contribute. I ain't got nothing of substance. <laughs> but speaking of substance, thank you to our patrons, including Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and... Logan. The, the Full Metal, metal patron, patron. And Ben, the Fourth, Patron, patron of Hope. Of Hope. And Mia the Fifth, the Rainmaker. She makes it rain, yo. Oh, she makes it rain. And thank you to Sierra the Sixth, the Keyblade patron. Whish, whish, whish. And thank you to Four Horsemen Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall, Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mall Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can shop online at shop.fourhorsemancomics.com. And if you make it in the store, say hello to Ronald III, Grampus of Christmas. And I don't have anything, um, I don't think I have anything mean to say about Ron today. He's just a nice guy. Uh, I like his website too much to be mean right now. Yeah, it was real nice. I went because uh, now, because before, like figuring out how to tell you, like, hey, if you can get me this cover, do it. Just was like a pain. Yeah. So I just accepted whatever. But now I can go. Oh, I want this additional cover. Mm -hmm. Um, here's some books I'm interested in checking out. I'll pre-order this. I thought about pre-ordering like the other absolute books, like Absolute Batman and Wonder Woman. But I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to stick to Superman, and if they're good, I'll go back and buy them and then re-add them to my subscription list. Yeah. Yeah, it's real cool. I, I went through, I got, like, the list of, like, all the Star Wars books for the next year, and I 
and I went through and like, okay, let's go through this. Let's see what we need, what we don't need, yeah. this, that. And I'm like a real sucker for uh, blank card variants. I don't know, if, like, do you know the one? I I love the idea. I haven't gotten to do it of taking one of these blank cards up to like a comic convention, getting a custom cover done on some of these. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I've been meaning to do, because I have Action Comics 1000 blank card variant. I want to get somebody that's like a decent artist to do Goku versus Superman on the cover for Action Comics 1000. That'd be cool. Yeah, that's the custom I want for that one. Do it. And I was Anyway, yeah, if you uh, live in the area or if you don't, just <laughs> just get, give the money. Yeah, go to Forrestman, uh, forrestman.tcg player. Wait a minute. Hold on. I just I say it a thousand times. It's a thousand times. Forhorseman.tcgplayerpro.com. Cool. Yeah. All right. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for reading and re uh, reading Night of the Living Dummy 3 and recording with me tonight. It felt good to relate to the parents. <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, thank you to our patrons. Stay tuned for our socials and stay scary. Stay scary, everybody. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher, and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that the Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, and all other major podcast apps. Stay scary. Mm.